By the time I graduated, I felt like I finally understand how things work in the school and how I can optimize my time and get the most out of my studies in Sweden. Too late, isn't it? And that's why I brought you this video to tell you things that I wish I knew before I started studying or at least in the first months and to give you more perspective I asked a couple of my friends who graduated also uh, this uh, last month and I asked them what are the things that they wish they knew from the beginning and they think it might be helpful for you. The first friend I asked is Naima from Pakistan. Naima has very valuable tips. The first one is you should focus on learning and don't stress. You get multiple times to, to retake your exam here in Sweden, so just focus on learning. The second tip is that you get health insurance, so don't lose your receipts so when you go check the doctor and you can submit those uh, receipts to the student service and then you get refunds. The third tip is something people miss and you don't want to miss that. Make sure you register for your exam before they close the registration. If you miss that, you can't take the exam. And because your mental health is very important, Naim also says that you should dedicate 40 hours a week for your studies and manage your time very well include in those 40 hours your lectures your self-study time and then you can be relaxed and pass your courses our next friend is elisa from the netherlands and elisa is very active during the kickoff and that's why she recommends to you that you don't miss the kickoff join a feather group and participate in the activities and even after the kickoff there are more activities so make sure you know which instagram pages to follow so you can see what are the coming activities and join them. Our third friend is Mohamed Yagoubi from Morocco. Mohamed says that first, studying in Sweden requires more personal effort. You will get uh, guidance, but it's more about you to uh, dedicate time to study by yourself. The second thing that he says, don't bring so much clothes from your home country because it's more cold here than you think and your clothes will not be suitable. Our fourth friend, which is my brother, is Mohamed Musa from Libya. And Mohammed says, first, make sure you follow the student union so you can find trips and activities that they organize and you maximize your time in Sweden. The second tip is that you don't be shy to ask for student discounts when you want to buy something or do some activities because most of the time they have discounts, but you have to ask for it. And Regarding that point, make sure you download the Mesenet app. It has a lot of things that have discounts, shops and uh, bus trips and a lot of other things. Another tip that I know that my brother focuses on a lot, which is make sure that you invest in a good thermal layer of clothing and be familiar with the terms like windproof, uh, waterproof and insulation. And then we have our friend Chloe from France and Chloe, I know that she likes outside activities and have, I have joined her before in cross-country skiing last year. And that's why her first advice that you have a balanced life between work and enjoying your time. And since your classes end early, plan something in the evening and manage your time. Her second advice is that you should bring your sportive clothes because there are a lot of things you can do outside like hiking, running and skiing. Our last friend for this video is Annika from Germany. Annika says that you don't have to spend so much money in the beginning to buy furniture for your place, like your student apartment. The university now has a swap room where you can give your old furniture that you don't need and pick uh, other furniture so you can get furniture from there for free. And also you can get free stuff and cheap stuff from uh, Blockit, secondhand stores and Facebook market. Annika's second tip is look for volunteering work to do. In that way you can learn about the culture in Sweden and get to know people in Jönköping and that's super nice. That can be through working in a grocery store for people in need or it can be through uh, working for example in the soup kitchen or movie theater in uh, Kulturhuset or you can just join the student associations in the school that uh, do some volunteering work with them to clean the city for example. Or there are many things to join. Another thing that Annika recommends is that beside the library we have in school, you can join the city library. 
get a card for the city library and that way you can have more options of books or even a closer library to where you live and you, they have books in English and Swedish and there are many options. And those were the tips from our friends and to be honest they covered most of the topics I can think of. I only have one more additional advice to give which is in the exams here in Sweden make sure you read the intended learning outcomes and the grading criteria for the exam so you can understand what you are supposed to provide in the exam so you can pass it or have good grades and that's something that I struggled with kind of in the beginning until the end and another tip is to don't hesitate to ask the teachers if you don't understand it they will be happy to explain it to you and it's your right to know that so you can answer properly so that's it if you have more questions if you have if you want to know about a topic that we didn't cover just let us know in the comments and we'll make a video about it maybe so that's it have a good one and good luck in your studies